Hello everybody. Deep learning series continues today. And the topic is exchanging pieces, especially the queen trade. The reason why I'm doing this series, folks, is to help you improve your game. We are discussing subjects that lead to conceptual understanding. Conceptual understanding. It means you're forming connections. You're asking the question of why. Why am I playing this move? Because if you really deeply understand the reasoning behind the moves, then you can transfer that knowledge to other tasks that show deeper similarities, right? Chess is a very complex game. You need obviously also fluid intelligence. You need some working mirror resource, visualization and calculation and so on. But also this conceptual understanding is very important. So while I'm talking more about why we are doing this series, it's why to play. And can you please tell me, folks, whether the queen should be traded off or whether white should keep the queens on the board? And again, when you decide you want a queen trade in chess, the fundamental question is, can you tell me, whose king is safer? Here we are forming connections, right? We are taking one concept, the queen trade, and we are tying it to king safety. And we are explaining to us in logical terms, right? Queens are the strongest piece in chess. They can support our attack. So if the enemy king is weaker, we should generally keep the queens on the board. You see the connection? Now you understand the reasoning why that decision is correct. The queen trade decision connects to piece activity. And we always should seek to form connections when we learn anything, also, you know, other domains, right? That should be our connection. This leads to higher order learning, deeper processing of information. I made a chessable course about this, the art of exchanging pieces. That was one of the main reasons why I made that course, because exchanging pieces, first of all, every single game has an exchange. It's a very high chance of occurrence, right? What you learn will transfer to your games, but also exchanging pieces, you form connections, right? Pawn structure, space, king safety, good pieces, bad pieces. You can justify your decisions around exchanges using those higher order concepts and forming connections. And this will lead to much longer retention, folks, from learning science. This is the way that we should study material. And I will do my best, to the best of my ability also, to give those concepts to you in those videos. But again, please check that course on Chessable to improve your peace exchange and strategic understanding in chess. Coming back to this moment, folks, obviously you look at the kings, right? Whose king is safer? You tell me. Obviously it's white king who is much safer, right? Look at how blocked those pawns are on the king's side. There's no way for black to open up lines and attack our king. But look at the black king, right? Oh my god. Pawn storm is raging. Things will be opened up very, very soon on the queen's side. And that king is not feeling safe. So this queen trade decision totally connects to the king's safety. I love this example because we can isolate the main lesson nicely, right? So again, it's a, it's a clean learning experience. We are not distracted by random details. We are focusing on the main element. So obviously white should not exchange the queens and the best move for white is simple queen d2 retreat. And I'm getting ready to open up lines on the queen side and give mate to your king. That's my goal. If black takes on e4, then it just loses directly because of rook e1, and this rook will be hanging. And if black takes the pawn on b5 twice, then white will play e6. There also moves like rook b1, and this will lead to collapse very, very soon. You see how white pieces are attacking the enemy king directly, for example, like this and queen e5. You're already facing enormous threats like this, right? Again, whose king is safer? That connects to our episode, folks. By keeping the queens on the board, white will force a mate in six moves, if I'm not wrong here, yeah? The mate is coming right now. Just watch this, yeah, rook e1 is a very nice move. Doubling up on the seventh rank, or I just like rook e8, forces rook g8, but then the rook joins the attack, and he gives mate to the enemy king. This little sample line shows us why we should keep the queens on the board, right? I want you to focus on the why question, because this will allow you to transfer what you learned in this lesson to your own games, okay? In the actual game, a chess crime happened. White took on e5, and suddenly after rook takes e5, black was having a much better rook end game, much better pawn structure, right? He will double up on the e-file. The king is safe. That's the most important thing. The king on b8 has become a much safer piece after the queen trade, folks. You see the beautiful connection? 
So if there's something that you learned from this video, please, right? Queen trade always connects to the king's safety in chess. And that's always the first question you must ask yourself when you're deciding on the queen trade. Let's see whether you can transfer what you just learned to these examples, folks. In this position, black took on b2, grab one pawn. Here, black grabs the second pawn on c3, okay? Two pawns. And bishop g5 is on the board. Here, I want you to take a step back, stop the video, and find a great plan for black and justify your idea using this understanding, conceptual understanding and so on, okay? So first things first, you should always look at the threat after you see a move by the opponent. Bishop g5, why did they play this move? Obviously, he wants to take on e7, remove the defender and crash through on c6. Your king is in the center. Yes, you have two extra pawns, but white is much better developed. You should be careful in general, right? You have extra material, but care is required. So given this analysis, what are the candidates for black? Congratulations, folks. If you found beautiful move queen before, black is seeking a queen trade ASAP because his king is under fire. And after, let's say, queen a6, white renews the threat. So can you see a great move for black in this position, folks? Yes, queen b6. Black insists on the queen trade, thus safeguarding his king, thus stopping white's intention of taking and taking on c6. And this way, white, black gains a big advantage. You can even take the third pawn because there's no way for white to hit your queen. And the knight is still buried on a3. And this threat is not dangerous. You will slowly consolidate your three pawn advantage. This position actually connected, right? To king safety plus the material advantage. Obviously, if you are so much extra material, you want to generally trade the queens as well to simplify the game, to simplify your advantage, right? Again, we are forming connections in this position, but queen b4 was the only way for black to claim an edge because if you just simply go here and defend here, you allow an ip5. Great if you also spotted this idea for white in this position, folks. White is so much better pieces and better piece activity. Look at your king stuck in the center and queen b7 is on the board, hitting here, hitting here, and the queen is a monster and your queen on c3 is offside. Let's analyze this, this position to consolidate our lesson today, folks. In this position, black just went bishop takes f2 and grabbed a pawn. White took on g6 and black took back with the rook. I want you to find the only move that keeps white in the game. And I want you to tell me why. Why? Please explain this move to me using what you learned today, folks. Folks, the only move that keeps white in the game is queen b7. White forces a queen trade. Why? Because our king is much less secure. Your queen was just about to invade on g3 and give enormous threats against your weakened and lonely king on h1. So queen b7 is a strategic queen trade, and white accepts that despite being a pawn down, that's the best, because after takes takes, at least this pawn will distract the black pieces, and white pieces will go forward, it was like knight b6, for example, and white gains some counterplay for sure in this position. You can even go for this tactic, right? If you take back with the knight, then you make a queen, Right, the effect of that b7 pawn, that's nice. So black gives up the exchange. And black is still slightly better because of good bishops and a center and so on. But obviously white is fighting in this endgame, right? So, but going back, the initial point, right? So the point is this, after rook takes g6, can you able to assess and judge the king's safety properly? Can you see, for example, that queen g3 is coming and you will be mated soon? And this, once you see this, right, queen b7 appears you, appears to you like a very natural candidate for white to survive in this position. Now, I will rotate the board, guys. That's how we should learn, yeah? Look, look at the position from both angles, from both directions. After rook takes g6, after rook takes g6, what should black do? Now you're playing with the black side. What is the best reply for black? How should this rook be recaptured here? Take your time. Folks, there's only a single winning move for black, and that's insane looking move. King takes g6. The main point is very simple. We are stopping queen b7, which would force a queen trade. 
by taking with, with the king, you're disallowing white to trade the queens. And your next move is very simple, right? Queen g3 is coming next. And you will crash the white king on h1. Black is completely winning. For example, queen b7, queen g3. And this queen doesn't do anything on b7. She's totally offside, in fact, from the main action. This queen on g3 can no longer be chased away. And there are so many threats like queen h3 followed by bishop g3. For example, here, yeah, c7, queen h3, followed by bishop g3. And just basically crash through the white king on the king's side. It's a lovely little move, guys. So in this position, right, it's totally about the concept we learned today. There's only a single recapture that wins for black, and that's totally about to keep the queens on the board. You see, conceptual understanding, looking at the opponent's resources as well, like rook takes g6, obviously you should see as black that you allow queen b7. You don't want to see this on the board. Thus, king takes g6 appears to be a great candidate. No way white can attack this king on g6. There's no way to exploit it. And queen g3 is coming on the next move. Beautiful. And finally, I will leave you with this homework position. It's white to play. And the question is, should white trade the queens or should white keep the queens on the board? That's a game of Botvinnik with the white pieces. And I want you to look at the whole board, try to apply what you learned today, try to ask yourself the right questions to make this very committal decision. For further information on these concepts, please check out my course on Chessable, The Art of Exchanging Pieces. There's a separate chapter on the queen trade. And this way, as I said, we are forming connections, we are engaging in deeper processing and higher order learning. This way of learning material will give you long-lasting learning. You will keep this learning for a long, long time, guys. Retention will be much higher. Trust me, we are engaging in conceptual understanding and that's what we aim when it comes to transfer in chess. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe and there will be more videos soon that follows on this theme. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you all the best in your, to your chess game. I will catch you very soon, folks. Bye-bye.